Fellow Ghanaians, once again, good evening. It has been eight weeks since our nation embarked on a coordinated, enhanced response towards combating the coronavirus pandemic after we recorded our first two confirmed cases. We've taken the necessary measures of aggressively tracing, testing, isolating, and in treating infected persons and their contacts as a means of containing the spread of the virus amongst the population. Measures such as the temporary partial lockdown of Accra, Tema, Kumasi, and Kaswa, the adherence to enhanced hygiene and social distancing protocols, the ban on public gatherings, and the closure of our schools and our borders have imposed considerable difficulties on all of us. But I'm heartened that we appreciate that they are essential to save lives and livelihoods. And I thank all of you for your continuing cooperation. As of Wednesday, 6th May, a total of 135,902 tests had been conducted, with our country's total number of co confirmed cases standing at the time at 3,091, with 303 recoveries and, sadly, 18 deaths. On Thursday, 7th May, 14,046 more tests were conducted, and this included the clearing of the last set of backlogs. Our total confirmed cases then rose to 4,012 positives, i.e. 921 new cases. Our recovery stood at 323, eight persons were critically ill, and death still at 18. It is important to stress that 533 out of the 921 new cases recorded between last Wednesday and Thursday are factory workers from a fish processing factory located in Tema. All 533 persons were infected by one person. Again, let me reiterate that these new 921 cases were from backlogs dating as far back as 26th April and not necessarily over a 24-hour window. The coming on stream of seven more testing facilities across the country to complement the efforts of the Noguchi Research Institute, the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, and the National Public Health Reference Laboratory at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital have meant that we have been able to clear all the backlog of tests and the reporting on the cases of infections since Friday 8th May is now current. On Friday, a total of 5,253 tests were conducted with 251 positives. On Saturday, 2,255 tests were conducted with 266 found to be positive. For today, Sunday, a total of 3,045 tests have been done, with 160 testing positive. These relatively lower daily numbers of infections are welcome and reinforces the fact that the measures instituted to help reduce person-to-person -person contact and help defeat the pandemic are working. So, as of today, Sunday, 10th May, the country has conducted a total of 160,501 tests, with our total number of infections standing at 4,700, with 494 recoveries, five persons being critically ill, and 4,179 persons responding to treatment, 22 persons virtually all of them with underlying illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, and chronic liver disease have unhappily died. 
we must understand that the more people we test for the virus, the more persons we will discover as positive, and thus have the opportunity to isolate and treat them. If you do not test people for the virus, you will not find the persons who are positive, let alone isolate them from the population and treat them and prevent them from spreading the virus. Indeed, had we not been proactive in undertaking enhanced contact tracing of infected persons and had relied solely on testing persons who reported to hospital, which is the practice followed by some other countries, i.e. routine testing, our total case count would have stood at 1,413. The other 3,232, i.e. two-thirds of the population of positives, would have been undetected and still be within the population unknowingly infecting others. I know some political actors will want you to believe that our current numbers represent a failure on the part of government. Do not begrudge them. They need to make such comments for their political survival. On the contrary, we must be emboldened in the knowledge that the 4,700 persons infected so far with the virus have been identified, taken out of the population, isolated, and are being treated. The implementation of our strategy of aggressively tracing, testing, and treating is our surest way of rooting out the virus. This early identification of persons with the virus ensures that they do not spread the virus to others. We are provided with the opportunity to treat them, and it helps us to understand better the dynamics of the virus. The rapid implementation of all of our policies has resulted in our low infection, hospitalization, and death rates, some of the lowest in Africa and indeed the world. We certainly must be doing something right in Ghana. Our country has administered more tests per million people than any other country in Africa. And in fact, the World Health Organization, WHO, has reached out to us to share our sample pooling experience with other African countries so they can adopt this strategy and also ramp up their testing capabilities. It is thus vital that we continue to maintain the measures of enhanced hygiene and social distancing protocols to contain the spread of the virus, as they are the surest way to a quick return to a life of normalcy. All stakeholder bodies I have interacted with over the last three weeks in the health, labor, religious, chieftaincy, educational, hospitality, tourism, and creative arts sectors share in this opinion because collectively we believe they are essential for our very survival. These groups are also being engaged on the way forward towards the easing of these restrictions so that our social and economic lives can go back to normal whilst protecting lives at the same time. Soon those engagements will enable us to design a clear roadmap for the easing of restrictions. In my address to workers and the nation on May Day, I announced the extension of the closure of our borders for one more month as the means to continue halting the importation of the virus into our country. Tonight, I've come into your homes to announce that the ban on public gatherings as set out in executive instrument number 64, has been extended also to the end of the month, i.e. 31st May. So during this period, there will continue to be a ban on public gatherings, such as the holding of conferences, workshops, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities, and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, continue to remain closed. There's still a ban on funerals, 
other than private burials conducted with not more than 25 persons. It is noteworthy that the police are arresting and prosecuting persons irrespective of their status in society who flout these regulations. We can allow a few persons for their narrow selfish interests to jeopardize the health, well-being, and safety of the larger population. If you fall foul of the law, you will face its full rigors. Fellow Ghanaians, like you, I would like to see an end to these restrictions. I know the difficulties each and every one of you has been through over the last two months. You've had to alter completely your way of life. You've had to stay at home, except for specified purposes. You cannot travel outside the country. You cannot go to church. And you had to cancel activities usually associated with Easter. In this holy month of Ramadan, our Muslim brothers and sisters are having to pray at home instead of congregating at the mosque and foregoing the public celebration of the Eid. Parents are having to bear the extra burden of providing care for their children who, instead of being in school, are currently at home. Operators of trotters, taxis, buses, markets, hotels, restaurants, bars and nightclubs have lost their patronage of their clients and, as a result, lost much-needed income. Significant numbers of people have unfortunately lost their jobs because of the impact of the virus on our economy. Most of us want to hang out with our families, friends, and loved ones in a social setting, but cannot. Uncomfortable as these restrictions have been, we have no option but to stay the course. We can only guarantee the safety of each other if we continue to adhere to them. As I've said before, these restrictions cannot and will not be a permanent feature of our lives. And shortly, I hope to announce the steps for systematically easing the restrictive measures to bring us back to normality. Each one of us, however, can help to speed up this process if we continue to practice the measures of social distancing, washing our hands with soap under running water, refrain from shaking hands, and wearing our masks whenever we leave our homes. These measures must be respected by all. We do this, not just for ourselves, but also to lessen the workload on our health workers who continue to be at the forefront of caring for those affected by the virus and caring for the sick in general. On our part, in addition to the incentive package instituted for all health workers, government has so far distributed the following to healthcare facilities across the country. 4,240,719 gloves, 2,000,000, 576,333 nose masks, 60,823 goggles, 60,132 liters of sanitizers, 50,770 head covers, 41,992 gowns, 41,000 medical scrubs, and 30,783 N95 face masks. Further, we extended this gesture to other frontline actors engaged in the fight, with the presentation of 5,000 PPEs to members of the media. And tomorrow, Monday, 11th May, 10,000 domestically produced face masks and more money will be delivered to the National Commission for Civic Education to enhance its capacity to undertake the important work it is already doing. Let me once again thank the healthcare workers, including all those responsible for the tracing, testing, and treating for their heroic contribution to the fight against the pandemic. They will be long remembered in our history. 
in advance, I say a hearty aiku to the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, which celebrates its 60th anniversary on Tuesday. This weekend, I chaired a three-day cabinet retreat at Pedriasi Lodge to examine in detail measures aimed at reviving and strengthening our economy. I'm happy to reiterate that government is putting in place a resilience and recovery plan with the overarching aim of finding more resources to strengthen the productive sectors of the economy to ensure sustained economic activity. We're rolling out a soft loan scheme of 600 million CDs in this month of May to support micro, small, and medium-scale businesses. And as you know, the commercial banks, with the support of the Bank of Ghana, have also instituted a 3 billion CD credit and stimulus package to help revitalize industries, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service, and manufacturing sectors. The Minister for Finance is working tirelessly to find additional resources to supplement these amounts, including the resources to finance the construction of 88 district hospitals, Agenda 88, and seven regional hospitals, which he will announce at the appropriate time to Parliament and the nation. Before bringing this address to an end, it is critical that I raise one significant side of the fight against this virus which has not been given enough emphasis, but has to do with the change in attitude that will impact on our lifestyles. That has to be one of the permanent legacies of the pandemic. We have to improve our hygiene, our fitness and exercises, our eating, generally our style of living, which will boost our immunity to disease and the virus. For instance, we're told that the key vitamins that fortify our immune system are vitamins A, B6, C, and E. Fortunately for us in Ghana, all of these can be found in many of our foods, such as oranges, contumbre, millet, cashew nuts, crabs, plantain, okra, dawa dawa, brown rice, and mushrooms. Following a good diet, patronizing our healthy foods, exercising regularly, ensuring our personal hygiene, and improving our lifestyle habits should become part and parcel of our daily routines, which will help bo bolster our immune systems and help us in the fight against the pandemic. Fellow Ghanaians, this virus as we have seen the world over, is no respecter of persons and has wrecked its havoc on every country on the planet. We can defeat it if we continue to look out for one another and remain each other's keeper. We're fighting a common enemy and it is imperative that we do not allow religious, ethnic or political differences to get in the way of certain victory. So we cannot allow a few persons who wish to use these differences to scuttle our collective fight to succeed. Over the course of our history as a people, we've had to overcome several trials and tribulations, slavery, imperialism, colonialism, tyranny, and dictatorship. And we have overcome them all so that with the help of the Almighty, we are today building a free, independent state. A state that, despite the urgency of the crisis, is governed by democratic institutions and respect for fundamental human rights, especially freedom of speech. That is as it should be. For we are determined in our generation to realize the dreams of freedom that animated and inspired the founders of our state. I'm confident that we will overcome this pandemic as well. This too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord's. 
May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention, and have a good night.